Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and it's time for part four and the final part of the Q&As. Let me get my hat on and let's finish this up. Hi Jason, do you think I can use my muscle memory as a recomp tool? I used to be a lot stronger and bigger, but with my current lifestyle, I can't train as hard as I used to because I need to take care of my career. Uh, nothing wrong with that. But I want to lose some fat, look leaner, and get ready for the summer. The thing is, when I stopped training seriously, I lost some fat and muscle because I also uh, kept my calories low most of the time. If I start lifting weights again two to three times a week with a good program and eat better, can I regain most of my lost muscle while losing some body fat? Yeah, absolutely, brother. Absolutely. The fact that you had more muscle and more strength maybe a year or so ago than you do now, if it's only been a year or two, and you go back to training... Uh, the way that you work, and I assume you're training a little, it's just not very much, and you're not training as hard. Um, if you've lost, say, five pounds of muscle, that you used to have five or six more pounds of muscle than you have right now that you've lost, uh, you go back to training and you just stay at maintenance calories and get on a good program, within probably five to six months, you will regain that lost muscle that you had. You'll regain it, and you will probably lose an equivalent amount of body fat. So you could probably expect to regain the loss size you have and expect your body fat percentage to go down by a couple of percent. So if you're like 16% body fat now, you'll probably go down about, you know, 13 and a half or 14. Uh, muscle memory is a very valuable and valid tool for body recomposition. Uh, so if you want to take advantage of it, go ahead. It'll actually work. It should work just fine if you go on a good program and a good diet. It'll work. Nothing else to say on it other than, yeah, it'll work. All right, next question. Hey, Jason, I do a lot of behind-the-neck push presses, and I noticed that my shoulders improve thanks to your advice. Thing is, I noticed that my behind-the-neck push press strength is almost the same as my front overhead push press. Is this something that is okay? By the way, I train for powerlifting and do a lot of explosive work. Um, thanks for your content. All right, when you say almost, I don't know what almost means. Five pounds apart, 20 pounds apart. Uh, that's hard to say, but here's the thing. You said you do a lot of behind-the-neck push press. I'm going to assume you train the exercise more. You train it a lot more than your normal push press. Uh, means you probably have the motor pattern down a little better, so it's no surprise that it's catching it, even though you should be stronger at the front push press. Number two, maybe your upper chest isn't that strong. And if your upper chest isn't that strong, which is the main advantage. The behind the neck push press will put a little more delt in and pull some of your upper chest out of the exercise. Well, if you've trained it to be stronger and your upper chest it maybe isn't up to par in terms of strength, it would make sense that this is what you're experiencing. Uh, there's nothing wrong with it. It's just a matter of are you okay with it personally? Are you okay with having stronger shoulders uh, than an upper chest? And, uh, and if you aren't, then switch to more front press. All right, it's pretty straightforward. It's pretty simple. You just got to figure out where your personal balance is. Uh, but if you're not worried about it and you're happy with the results of it, then don't worry about it because clearly the exercise that you're putting more effort into, you're getting more out of than the one that you're putting less effort into. You know what? That's perfectly normal. That's how training works in the body, right? Makes sense. There you go. No problem then. All right, next question. Hey, Jason. I like the back thickness I built with rows and enjoy doing chin-ups, but I don't want my back to get any wider. Which vertical pull variation has the least widening effect? If I do super narrow grip chin-ups, will it have a stronger muscle building effect on the arms and less on the back width? Nope, absolutely not. There you go. There's where you get into bodybuilder myths. The wider grip builds wider back thickness. No, it doesn't. The wider grip uses less bicep. That's it. That's it, it doesn't work the back any harder or any weaker than the narrow grip does. It just uses less bicep, that's it. The narrow grip is just gonna stimulate your biceps a little more while stimulating your back the exact, exact same amount. Uh, this is again why I tell people the wide grip is stupid. Why would you want to not grow your biceps? You know, that's the crazy thing. You'll see bodybuilders who are like, I'm gonna do the wide grip and I'm gonna do a bunch of curls and it's like, well, if you just did the narrow grip, you'd work your back just as much, and you could probably do two less sets of curls every week and get the same size arms. Just, just throwing that out there. No, the narrow grip just adds more bicep in, and it puts you through a fuller range of motion. Your back is going to get wide er anytime you make it grow. You can't control 
the width versus thickness of your lats. All you can do is make your lats, okay, let me explain this. You can do three things to your lats with training. You can make them bigger, you can make them smaller, or you can keep them the same. That's your three choices. You can't control if the lats get thicker versus wider in any ratio. It doesn't work that way with a muscle like that. The only reason some people's back gets thicker sometimes without the noticeable width is because they built other muscles in their back. Like they did a ton of deadlifts and front squats and built up all their thoracic erectors and mid traps more. That makes the back look thicker because it's all around and underneath the lats and it pushes it all out more. Their back gets thicker. It wasn't the lats per se, because if they didn't get wider to go with the thickness, it wasn't their lats growing at all. You can't control that. If you stimulate your lats to grow, they are going to get wider and thicker at the same time. Nothing you can do about it. But in this case, if you want to not make them maybe grow as much and you just want more bicep growth, the narrow grip will put more work on your biceps. But if you don't want your back to get any wider, don't add any more sets, don't add any more reps or any more weight to the bar on any back exercises that you do. Um, because it is going to get wider if it gets stronger. On any exercise, it's going to add width, unavoidable. So there you go, that's all you could do. Don't progress on any of your back exercises. All right, uh, next question. Currently building a home gym, but I don't have that much weight yet. What are good styles of training? or specific programs where I can achieve a good or near maximal strength gains uh, while using less weight. Example, uh, max weight I have is 295 pounds. Current deadlift max is 480 in competition. Thanks and keep up the good work, Jason. All right, you can build your deadlift without actually using heavy weight on the deadlift. And this is gonna mess a lot of people up. Usually, if you deadlift just enough and you do plenty of accessory work to build all the muscles in the deadlift, your deadlift will be fine. Uh, it's kind of like the story I told, remember when I was in the UK, I built back up to a 525 deadlift. I got back up to 525, right? I pulled it on camera and I quit deadlifting for 10 months, right? I quit deadlifting for 10 months and I focused on my squat, my bench, and my rows. I did tons of pen lay rows, T-bar rows, all that stuff. Worked on my bench press and my squats, and because I didn't want the deadlift interfering with the recovery, I needed to build my squat back up. I wanted to get my squat back up well over 400 for reps, because this is in my rebuilding phase after I'd spent uh, 10 months in bed and had spent several years away from training due to doctor's orders. Uh, but I had my deadlift up to 525. I went 10 months without deadlifting. When I came back and deadlifted again, I hit 515 on the first day, then I did 525 the second workout, and then I went 540 on the workout after that. Three workouts, I had it back up 15 pounds heavier than what I had pulled 10 months before. Why? Because I built all the muscles up. Now, what do I do these days? You guys saw me, what, back in December, uh, when I did a peaking phase of heavy deadlifting, I put 500 on the bar, I pulled seven clean reps on camera, completely beltless. Belt, no belt, no straps, with boots on. Since then, I've only gone over 500 a few times. I know I've done some work sets with 535. I think I pulled it for four or five. I might have done that on camera for four, put it up on Instagram. But I've done that, and you know what I've mostly done since then? I do tons of speed work with 405. Tons of speed work at 405. I have no doubt in my mind, if I were to go back and spend one month heavy deadlifting again, I'd probably be back where I was or higher. No problem. Why? Because I'm training the technique. I'm doing a lot of back work, a lot of pulling work, a lot of chin-ups, all that stuff. But I'm coming in and I'm doing a lot of volume with a lighter weight on the deadlift. Now, my max deadlift should be over 600 based on any calculations anyone does. All right, do the math yourself with the work sets I've done on camera without failure, without grinders. Clean reps. These aren't max reps. I only do sets of 405. Now, I have weeks where I do as many as 12 or 14 sets of 405 for triples for speed. You could come in and do the same thing. Once a week, if you come in, you got 295, that's all you can afford for your plates. You come and do 10 sets of three for speed with 295 on the deadlift to maintain your technique, to maintain your speed strength, and then you come in and do enough heavy upper back work. Why wouldn't your deadlift strength be maintained? You know what, your deadlift might go up. If you did that for the six months and that's all you could afford and then you get more weights finally, and you spend one month 
working on heavy deadlifts, you'll probably be at 500. You'll probably be at 500. You don't have to deadlift heavy to build strength on the deadlift. You just have to maintain strength through technique, speed, volume. All that can be done with a lighter weight. And as long as you're building up and hypertrophying all the support muscles, say with other back work, shouldn't be a problem at all. Should be no problem coming in and with one month's time hitting a new PR. Uh, there are plenty of people out there, deadlifters, who don't even get within 200 pounds of their uh, competition deadlift and then come in and hit PRs and meets. All right, there are deadlifters who do that. I'm not saying everyone does that. There are other methods of deadlifting. There are people who also pull heavy as fuck two or three times a week. They are out there also. There's more than one way to go about building a deadlift, and so you have options available to you with a lighter weight. It's not a problem, brother. All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.